Biden is killing the American dream of home ownership. Stephen Moore compares what buyers can afford today versus three years ago under President Donald Trump. In boasting about Bidenomics two weeks ago in Milwaukee, President Joe Biden declared that his policies are restoring the American dream, quote unquote. Then he went into his creepy whispering mode and assured us it's working. Isn't a big aspiration of the American dream owning your own home? Biden keeps making first time home ownership harder for young families for two reasons. One is that the overall jump in inflation and the slower increase in wages and salaries means that homes are more expensive. High home prices benefit those who already own their homes, but much of the increased value is due to general inflation, which reached a high of 9% last year, and of course it hurts everyone. A bigger killer for first-time home buyers has been the steady rise in mortgage rates from under Biden. When he came into office, the mortgage rate was 2.9% nationally. Now it is 7.1% thanks to, uh, in no small part, the Federal Reserve's 11 interest rate increases prompting, prompted by the $6 trillion Biden spending and borrowing spree in 2021 and 2022. So now, according to the mortgage company Redfin, just the increase in interest rates on a 30-year mortgage from 5% to 7% means a middle-income family that could at once afford a medium, median value home of $500,000 can only afford a home worth $429,000. Great, spend more and you get less house. Or instead of a single family home, you can only afford a three room condo or a townhouse. And if we compare the rates today versus when Donald Trump was president, the typical home buyer can only afford a house with a price tag more than 100,000 less than three years ago. What a deal. Maybe this is one reason the size of a new home is smaller than in the past. There's another way to think about the damage done by Joe Biden policies. If you want to buy a $500,000 home today, which is close to the median price in many desirable locations, your total interest payments will be at least $800 more every month. That means over three decades of payment totaling at least $250,000. Of course, rents are up nearly 20% as well. So for many 20-somethings, this means sleeping in the parents' basement. Biden talks a lot about bringing gaps between rich and poor and blacks and whites, but the group is that is most handicapped by these interest rate shocks is minorities. Black homeownership is still less than 50% for black households. The Washington Post calls this heartbreaking, but they blame racism, not bad government policies. There's one other impediment to home ownership for Generation X and Millennials. Many 30 and 40 somethings are hamstrung by their existing and expand, expanding debt. Credit card debt is now $1.03 trillion. Half of all families are expected to have problems paying off this debt each month. Delinquencies are rising, which can mean penalty rates of 20% to 25%. So if families can't afford their existing debt, how will they get a bank to approve $400,000 or more mortgage loan? An even bigger question is how in the world can Biden call his economic policies a success? Perhaps Biden has a secret plan to forgive trillions of dollars of mortgage debt, as he has already attempted to do with the student loans, but that just shifts the debt burden to taxpayers. It's hardly a solution. The Biden administration's assault on home ownership is not just harmful to the families that are being priced out of the market. It's bad for communities and cities around the country. When families become homeowners and set roots in a town, they're much more prone to care about not just improving their own house and maintaining the upkeep and mowing the lawn and trimming the hedges, but it gives them a stake in the schools and children in the neighborhood and the quality of the public services. In other words, home ownership gives Americans a sense of Tocquevillian civic pride. Crime is lower, neighborhoods are friendlier, and everyone's property value rises when they live in a community of owners and not renters. There is one reason to feel today's downward spiral can be reversed. Back in 1980, when Jimmy Carter was president, mortgage rates were not 7%. They reached above 17%. Voters rebelled against economic mayhem and chased Carter out of office. Ronald Reagan came into the White House and with wiser economic fiscal policies, 
mortgage rates quickly fell in half and then lower still, and it can happen again. This is by Stephen Moore on WND. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.